all right guys so we're going to start by downloading the keeper pay uh the keeper app not the keeper pay app please i'm just going to show you the difference between the keeper app and the keeper pay app right now so as you can see when you type keeper on google play store or your ios you get the two of them so this is the keeper store it's where you can record your debts, your um, design invoices and receipts and all that. You can get weekly reports on how your business is doing. And then there is also the Keeper Pay app. This is just like a regular um, payment app like Carbon and the rest. So I don't use this one. I use the Keeper Bookkeeping app. All right, so we're just going to download that. It took longer than expected, actually. I just had to speed up the process so that you guys can see this thing really quickly okay so i downloaded um a brand new one on a different phone from the phone i use for the business just so that you guys can see the whole process of like from installation to registering and everything so that it makes it easy for you guys all right so after it's installed i open it and then i allow keeper to send notifications this is the first thing that will pop up on your screen. So whether you choose bookkeeping or create an invoice, whatever you choose, you're going to be directed to exactly the same page, which is where you have to put your phone number and referral code. So referral code is if somebody referred you, blah, 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 you put the code there and then you choose a PIN, any 4 g PIN. I use 1234. You can use whatever you want. Then you agree to the terms and then you create that's it so it's just going to show you a demo of how the um how recording a keeper cell works so this is the demo add the amount add the description and then you click save and it's just going to upload automatically to your keeper page that's it so the next thing i'm going to show you now is how to set up So this transaction successfully added doesn't show all the time. You can always view your receipts though. This is your receipt. You can decide to save, send the receipt or print out the receipt. Or you can decide not to give receipts at all. It's all up to you, my dear. All right. So we're going to just go back to setting up the whole Keeper page. Let me just show you guys. It's actually quite easy, to be honest. After you do this... You have to sign in and then you put that four digit pin remember that you have to put that four digit pin don't forget that four digit pin when you come to that little pencil icon that is blinking right there can you see that little pencil icon that's blinking right there my business that's where you will add your business details so you would write your business name there it is that there's an asterisk beside business name because that is absolutely ne needed it's absolutely necessary oh my god what am i saying so i decided to go with fabrics i don't sell fabrics so i'm just doing this and then you add your email that one is not necessary you don't need to add your email but when you add your email they will be sending you weekly reports to your email on how your business is doing financially so there's an f just beside the my business tab click on that f and then go to my account details as you can see and then you can fill in all your necessary information i decided to use queen <laughs> so you can add your first name your last name you can add the image like your the your profile image can be your business logo like whatever you want to do you can take a picture of yourself and put it there it doesn't really matter you can upload your business signature and you can add your bank details it's absolutely not necessary to add your bank details but i'm just going to show you a demo of how to add your bank details you choose the bank then you write the account number and once you write the account number it will begin loading so that it can produce your account name obviously this is a fake account number so it's not going to produce any name all right so then you can go ahead and fill in more business details right i'm just showing you how to go to your gallery to find a picture for your logo and you choose your business what aspect of business you're doing i chose apparels clothing and shoes because this is obviously a fabric store it's a fake fabric store but anyway let's move on you choose the residence whether it's lagos open state acquire bomb anywhere just choose it and then once you choose it the the cities kind of load automatically so you pick a city from that state 
choose the year that is founded and then you add a business description the business description is not really necessary even the city is not necessary only the things that are asterisks are necessary so like you can definitely skip all of this it's really not necessary but it will kind of help um if you just add them i don't know i added them to mine so i don't know <laughs> Anyway, let's move on. So if you're registered with CAC, you can obviously turn that gray button into green and add your CAC registration number. But if you're not, it's completely fine. Skip it. And this part is really important. It's the reminder time. I have this one on actually in my RealKeeper account so that it reminds me to um, upload all the sales I made. You can say it should remind you around 7 p.m., 10 p.m., anytime you want, and then you upload everything. Or you can say it should remind you early in the morning. It doesn't really matter. All right, so I'm just going to show you how to put the money out and money in options. All right, so obviously money out is red, money in is green. So I'm going, we're going to start with money in. Click in money in, click on money in, then put in the total amount received, and then the total amount of the um, payment. Right, so let's say the the twelve pieces cost a hundred k, and the person has paid a hundred k. You put in hundred k in both um places. Choose your payment details. You can add your customer if you have their number. It's not necessary to add the customer, and then just click save, and then you are able to view your receipt. Decide whether you want to print out the receipt, save it, or send it to your customer. And yeah, that's it. So for money out, you just click on the red part. That's money out. You add the amounts that you pay. You add what you're paying it for. I decided to do electricity and water bill. And then you select a category. So this category has everything from supplies to printing to training to advertising, taxes, licenses, everything, loans, even savings daily savings is there just choose any category i chose electricity obviously um it's optional to add a supplier then you save it that's it you also you have to choose method of trans um, method of payment don't forget that so now i'm going to show you how you should record when you have debt so for instance somebody pays you and doesn't pay you full or you buy something for somebody and you don't pay in full this is how to do it so let's say it costs 150,000 you write the total amount 150,000 and then you write the amount you paid 100,000 and then you go and click supplies as the um category and I use the description supplier of new fabrics you have to add your supplier so I just added my own phone number there okay my other phone number I selected myself as the customer because i don't want to disturb any other person so what happens is you select a date that you want to pay pay back the debt and then keeper reminds you that you're supposed to pay back your debt on this day so i selected 30th of april of this year as the date i want to repay the debt and i saved it so that is automatically now in your debt um your debt tab uh -huh. so you see here you owe a hundred thousand error that's it very easy so let's say your customer is owing you this is how you do it you impute the total amount that everything the customer took cost and then you impute what the customer paid you which for for this particular scenario is 45,000 naira. so you can see that it automatically adds the balance due if you have any discount you give the customer add the discount there add the percentage i need to calculate the discount for you then you add the um description of the fabric i have the item i used fabric 10 10 yards blah 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 add the customer's name once again i added myself because i cannot be disturbing somebody and i chose payment details and i chose the day that the customer is supposed to pay back which is 30th of april that's what i'm using you know i chose um, pos as payment details and then i saved it so now what happens here is that once this transaction is saved and you can obviously view your receipt, send it to your customer, save it, print it, whatever. Once this thing is saved, when you go to your debt, you will notice that your debt will reduce. So instead of owing 100,000, you will now be owing 95,000 because your customer owes you 5,000 naira. All right. So Keeper just takes it that once your customer pays you 5,000, you will use it to settle a part of your debt see how easy it is so if you want to update your debt you just go to that debt, debt tab and then you click how much um repayment and then you choose if you want to repay in part or you want to repay in full 
decide how much you want to repay and then put it in there and then now your debt now reduces to 45,000 naira. can you see that can you see how easy it is to use this thing anyway this is when you want to create an invoice for a customer choose the date choose the due date like this is when the customer is supposed to pay you you can choose seven days you can choose immediately you can choose any like 14 days anything add the product name pick the customer's name um decide how many pieces or boxes or whatever i chose um three pieces of ankara fabrics at five thousand naira each so the invoice is going to read five thousand times three which is fifteen thousand naira and then i'm gonna add tax just so that you see how tax works like i'm just gonna add tax i'll add like two percent tax i don't know if tax is two percent that big but i'm just gonna add tax two percent comes up to 300 naira and then i'm gonna add a 10 percent discount i think yes a 10 percent discount that's 1500 naira. then i'm going to add a shipping fee of 3500 naira so once that has been added i will decide whether the customer paid by cash card pos transfer whatever and then i would choose the customer name phone number address state zip code all that good stuff just impute them in this place and then save once you save that remember we are assuming that this customer hasn't paid at all so this is the invoice right here so if the customer has paid there's a point a place there where you can add how much the customer has paid and then the balance would definitely show up on the invoice so the invoice goes to pen pending as you can see because the customer hasn't paid anything and you've put a date that the customer is supposed to pay so this will remind the customer using that phone number that's why the phone number is absolutely necessary it remind the customer on the day the customer is supposed to pay and a day before the customer is supposed to pay so you can click update payments just to update how much your customer has paid so i'm updating like the customer has paid fifteen thousand naira. right now i'm updating that and then once you update that, choose the mode of payment, you will notice that this invoice moves from pending to deposit. And then once everything has been fully paid off, it moves to paid. Okay, very, very easy. And then you can obviously print this out, send this to your customer, whatever. And remember that everything, every transaction you do goes direct, goes to your cash book. So as far as it's in your invoice, it's in your cash book already. So for those people who want to know whether this works as a receipt or as a point of sales, you can definitely print it out and give it to your customers as a point of sales. All right. So you can go to your all-time records, view your records and see how much you've made. Red is what has gone out. Green is what has come in. You um, subtract that and you know how much you've made. Here I'm just showing you how to take out your savings. There's definitely a category called daily savings. So I chose that and removed the 5000 as daily savings. You can obviously do that. So here are some other features that Keeper has but I don't really use. You can send money and receive money. You can pay bills by data. You can make business cards here. You can get your business registered with the CAC and you can also add your staff. So your staff can have access to this platform and register all your sales on this platform. I think this is really cool if you have a physical store. Well, I think at this point, Keeper should actually sponsor me. But anyway, this is the Keeper tutorial that you need. If you still have any questions, please email me. My email is in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Okay, so I actually forgot one important thing. So I had to open the app again. There's this place called Inventory. Yes, here you can put a list of every single thing that you've bought and then you can reduce it as you get all that. And then once your inventory gets to zero, if you had put in your supplier's contact, Keeper will send an autom automated message to your supplier letting them know that you're out of stock and you need a restock so you can also add the item image and all that you can do this for both products and services guys keeper is too easy try it out